Hi, Hi everyone. So we've been absent. Yeah. <laughs> um, we just, we get caught up with things. It's been busy, but yeah. we're back. So today we have conversation 30. Conversation 30. And it, today we're going to talk about our Lady of Guadalupe. So it's going to be um, kind of like an informative, um, I guess, day or... I don't know. Episode. Yeah. So, um, since tomorrow, December 12th, is the day of Our Lady of Guadalupe. So, we wanted to kind of incorporate that since we are close to Christmas as well. So, um, we're kind of, we're going to kind of share some stuff. Because there was some stuff that I found that wasn't, that I didn't know about. Yeah. So, you know, that's the cool thing. You always find mm -hmm. things you didn't know about. Yeah. But we kind of wanted to do something that was... It kind of went with what's going on at the moment, right? Yeah. With the month of December. So let's get right into it. So um, so this all started in the time of exploration when Spain, Portugal, and England were trying to, I guess, con is it conquest? Do the conquest? Or what is it called? When they're trying to, like, take over? <laughs> conquer? Yeah. They were trying to conquer um, in Mexico. So, um Along with that was their religious beliefs, which was um, Catholic, the Catholic Church at the time. They were Catholic, Roman Catholics. So they were trying to evangelize and spread their beliefs um, to other continents. Um, but when they met, because I just wanted to like bring this up right now, when they met with the Aztecs, of course, everybody knows what the Aztecs would do. Um, they would, they had multiple gods and they would offer human sacrifices to these gods um so when the spanish saw that that was happening they were like okay no like you guys need to stop doing that and there's only one god and so they were trying to evangelize but it was kind of difficult so um <clears throat> so on december 9th of 1531 in mexico city our lady of guadalupe appeared to a chichimecan native um, Juan Diego was his name and um, he was he had converted into the Catholic faith so at the time you know he was familiar uh, with our blessed mother and he was also familiar with you know the belief system so when he met her he was like whoa you know like yeah that's I, is that who I think it is yeah <laughs> so she had a request for him she had requested for him to go to the bishop and ask him to build a church where she had appeared to Juan Diego, which they call it the Tepeyac. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a, a, up on top of a mountain. Um, and there's brush and, you know, like it's not like a green, more deserty type situation up there. So um, Juan Diego then is like, okay, I'm going to go relay, relay this message to the bishop because it's very important. So he then goes to the bishop and the bishop was kind of like, I don't know. He was kind of feeling a little like, I'm not sure if he's telling me the truth. Yeah. So he asked him for maybe a sign that what he was saying was true. Okay. So Juan Diego at this time, he had an uncle that was ill and he was caring for his uncle. So um, when the apparition happened, he went and told the bishop, the bishop didn't believe him. So he he was like, okay, well, I need to care for my uncle, so I don't have time to go and try to get evidence for yeah. you. So I guess one night, his uncle was actually, he felt more ill, and he was, he thought, Juan Diego thought that he was in the verge of death. So then he decided to go out and find a priest to mm -hmm. bring him, and that way he can, you know, I guess, give him, like, his last, what do they call it, like, the confession, or to um, Santos Auxilios, I guess, or Santos yeah. Solios. So try to pray for him, you know, since he was moving to, since he was on the verge of death. So, um, so he decided to leave and try to go get the priest. And during that journey, which that happened on December 12th of 1531. Wow. Okay. She appeared to him again while he was on his way over there. And he, when he saw her, he was kind of ashamed and kind of embarrassed. Yeah. Kind of like, I'm sorry, I didn't follow your, or fulfill your request but you know i have this situation mm -hmm. with my uncle and so he explained and then uh the virgin mary told him uh your uncle has been healed 
So you don't no longer have to worry mm -hmm. about that. So she sets him off on another adventure. <laughs> so she tells him uh, to go back to the top of the hill and to cut roses. And he thought that was kind of weird because yeah. roses didn't really grow up there. Like it was just nothing but like shrub. cactus and shrub and bushes. And so he was like, okay. And it was in a cold December too. So yeah, that was weird. So when he goes up there, he finds the roses and it was a bunch of like really pretty, beautiful, like rose bushes. Colorful. And so he starts cutting them and he puts them in his, um, what do they call it? The, the, it's like a poncho, but it's not really a poncho. It's like, um, they call it something. I don't know. We call it a man. Uh, tilma. It's called a tilma. So he, um, so then he goes back to the Virgin Mary and he tells them, oh, here's the flowers. And so she starts to arrange them. So she she tells him, okay, this is perfect. You know, she starts to yeah. arrange them. And then she tells him, go back to oh, um, uh -huh. go back to take these roses back to the bishop and show him, yeah, you know, and give him the roses. Yeah. So Juan Diego goes back and then the, the bishop was surprised that he had all these pretty roses. So she, yeah. he drops the roses on the ground. And as he drops the roses, the image starts to appear on his til tilma uh -huh. so it's like a picture of the blessed mother mm -hmm. and um it's really colorful it's vibrant it's beautiful mm -hmm. and so then the bishop's like he falls to his knees along with i think yeah. there was somebody else with him and they're like oh this is a true miracle yeah you know because this guy it's not like he drew that you know like yeah. it didn't look like it was a paint and then plus you couldn't really paint in, in a tilma like it was the cloth was made out of like some sort of plant or something i don't remember what yeah <laughs> they talk about it but so then they build the basilica mm -hmm. and that's when the basilica begins the the big basilica that is um in the tepeyac in mexico yeah, it's city mexico city yes so they still have the painting there till this day yes and it's still in impeccable condition okay yeah so um so it's definite goals to go like yeah check it out, and you know? and people a lot of people thousands and thousands yeah, of people go to visit year. it every year yes and they they make like people make pilgrimages to go yeah and and you know they some people who are like really in their faith they'll go like on their knees until they they get in for a miracle know? Yeah. Yeah. And I wanted to talk miracles. a little bit about the background because I mean, going to get into the painting. Yeah. But Juan Diego's Tilma, the fabric, since it's not a prestigious, but it's like a, you know, low grade fabric. It's kind of what you could get. It's at afford the at the for time like, for somebody that wasn't, yeah. you know. So it was only supposed to last about 15 years. Okay. That's the, that's the typical yes yeah, span. span for that type of clothing uh till this day it's still in perfect condition mm -hmm. and it's been almost 500 years later wow so dude. that's impressive that is that's um, impressive but stuff. that's not all you guys <laughs> i mean it, for you non-believers out there yeah in 1791 nitric nitric acid was spilled on the fabric uh -huh. to try to i guess somebody was trying to like damage it Wow. And nothing happened to it. The image was still intact. And uh, there was little to like no damage done from that. On November 14th of 1921, the Tilma survived an explosion. Wow. And I think dude. it was a purposeful explosion where somebody was trying to blow it up. Wow. And everything burned. There was metal crosses that were like melted. There was dude, things around it crazy. that were like everything was oh gone except for the picture of of the virgin mary so it like, survived that first of all why are you trying to destroy it man like what was these i mean it's deals and like too like that that's kind of annoying because it's like it's like kind of like i don't want to say it's the same thing as the mona lisa but but like, it's like some why would somebody would try to so go upset it's like somebody's <laughs> work of art i'd be so upset if it was art bro like dude no mm -hmm. Like, why are you trying to destroy something that is so unique and you can't not get it, like, again? You know what I mean? So. Like, you know. Right there. That's just what art means. Okay, so, yeah, I'm going to get into the image. The actual image, um, the picture of the, that appeared. So, 
So, so when you see it, there's a lot going on. You know, I kind of... But everything has a meaning. Yeah, everything has a meaning for sure. I just wish I had like a thing a so we could show A picture of it? Them. Oh, that would be, that would be cool. Yeah, seriously. You would <laughs> We're think... we looking around. You, would, you think would think we think... would have one. I know, man. I was thinking about that today. So, um... Maybe we can post a picture of it. Yeah. Of the actual, like, picture. The real one. Yeah, so, so basically she's dressed in royal clothes that symbolizes that she's a queen. Mm -hmm. royalty right? clothing so it's like expensive like nice clothing so i don't know if you if you got into it here but i guess i'll just talk about it and then if it's in here i'll just talk about it well i wanted to really talk about like her skin color because in mexico we call her the morenita because uh -huh. she's tan like her and and the what they say is that she came to kind of identify herself with the people that she was appearing to you know yeah. which were the natives and which were, I don't know, they had some other explanation. But, you know, it's kind of like so people can feel comfortable and see that she yeah. is their mother as well. Go ahead. In a way where you could relate. Yeah, exactly. Relate to her. Okay, so, so yeah, which identified, yeah. The sun on so, her back. So, the sun on her back and the moon on her feet symbolized her power. Okay, so let me get into that a bit. So, I guess at the time, you know, Aztecs, um, not 100% familiar on the culture, but um, I know that they did have like a sun god and maybe a moon god. I'm not too familiar. But I guess what, what it symbolized in the in the painting um, was her, her standing in front of the sun, right? So the sun was behind her, mm -hmm. which symbolized that I'm greater than the sun, the sun god. Yeah. And also stepping on the moon, which means I'm greater than like the moon god as well you know so that's that's kind of the symbolism behind mm -hmm. those two and on her neck was a cross for the church a black sash tied around her waist which means she was pregnant this was the way aztec women identified themselves when they were pregnant but the um yeah on her wardrobe she does have like a cross and i i had like heard about that like you know prior to like doing research because not only does it symbolize the church but it symbolizes jesus yeah how and, jesus was crucified yeah and that's what i heard i heard that it symbolized that you know even though she was like greater than the sun and moon god there was still someone who was greater than her you know and and so yeah so i and, guess and what, that's what the cross symbolized. so with the sash. It symbolized god yeah yeah with the sash meaning that she was pregnant because that's how Aztec women would identify themselves as being pregnant, so they would tie up a black sash. And so this is the reason why they say uh, that the Virgin Mary or their, our Blessed Mother is the co-patroness of the unborn because she, that was one of the first images that has ever appeared that um, shows a pregnant, um, I guess, a pregnant um, apparition. Yeah. So and, and you know what? Like, now that we've gotten into that, there's actually like a passage in the Bible, you know, if if you're unsure about, you know, do you know where it's at? This info, I'm not sure, but I know that it's in the Book of Revelations. I've read it with my own eyes, so you can kind of believe that, <laughs> you know, because you know people tend to say like, oh, you're just saying. Maybe that, we, but maybe no. you can find it and then we'll put yeah, it. Yeah, on on I've read it. Time I've read it with my own eyes, so I know it's there. And it was talking about like a pregnant woman. And how she's clothed by the stars. Hmm. And is that specific? Yeah, dude. It's And that's why, like, when I read it, I was like, they're talking about, like, Our Lady of Guadalupe. Like, I, Ooh, you know what I mean? Tight. Yeah, so clothed by the stars. The Lord High Key. Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah, the Lord High Key. So, um, yeah, clothed by the stars and the sun behind her. Yeah. And I was like, I know exactly what that is. You know, you use imagery and... And boom, you know, that's that's instant thoughts. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, man, it's on there. And if you want to check it out, check it out, you know. So, so, so yeah. So she wears like wardrobe again, a flower mm -hmm. dress with a four petal flower, which was the symbol of the one true God right on her belly. So I guess it was. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. The flower. So the four petal flower was an Aztec representation of the true God. And so this flower appeared in her in her um, actual gown. Yeah. And it has it right above her belly, 
which represents, you know, since she was pregnant, mm -hmm. represents Jesus, the one true God. Yeah, yeah, and to the Aztecs, this symbol mm -hmm. represented the god above all gods. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that was really what, you know, the point was, that was really what, like, you know, the strive was for, was, like, for these people in this community to understand that there's only one true God. And I feel yeah. like that that was the whole purpose of, like, evangelization you know, of, of this appearance yeah. for, for everyone. Yeah, evangel evangelization for sure, for sure. You know, like, hey, this is the one true God and I'm coming to you in a way where I can be relatable to you so that you can, so, so that you can, this message makes sense to you, you know, yeah. and you, and you know that they're who the true God is and not the sun God and not this moon God, you know? So yeah, there was definitely purpose there. So the stars on her green cloak, because, you know, she does have, she has a cloak yeah, yeah, covering cloak. her hair all the way down. And it's a green cloak, and it has stars, stars. all over it. And um, so it, those stars were in the exact position of the constellations on the sky that night that she appeared to Juan Diego, Which right? Which is insane. Yeah, like they were... Because, yeah, they, they did a lot of studies. And, I, and we're not saying, like, this has all been studied. It's not yeah. like we're just saying it because that's what we learned or what... Yeah. Like, scientists... And um, PhD people, educators, like everybody, people who actually, specialize in yeah, stuff and paintings, like this. they yeah. actually scientifically Artists. proved that this is real. Like everything yeah. on here symbolizes something. And so when they even like the constellations, they went back all the way to 1531, December yeah. 12th, to figure out what how the sky was aligned yeah. and her cloak has the exact same alignment yeah that which is like with. how cool is that i mean you know and yeah. then and then you know what i've heard was that her dress you know because it was in a more like i don't know i feel like like a maroon color like they call it a pink like a okay pink color. all right all right I think so pink. peach so mm -hmm. that color was representing earth and the cloak with the stars represented like you know, space and everything that's that's greater than Earth, that's unknown, and just making that connection with both. You know, yeah. making that connection the with... The heavens and the Earth. Yeah, the heavens and Earth. Yeah, making that connection. And, you know, it just... I don't know, man. I feel like it circles so well. Like, that message that was, you know, that that image was meant to provide. What it represented. Yeah, so it's, it's cool, man. Um... Oh, yeah, so on the sky, yeah. Okay, so the feathers... That are on the bottom, where the angel is. Under the moon represented the Aztec god, Guatzitico. So showing that pretty much was showing... Power and it was light. showing her supreme... Because they believed in this uh, god. And it looked like... It's a picture of, like, a feathery creature. And so they believed that that was uh, one of their big gods, you know? And so... The way it, it was portrayed in, in the image of Our Lady was that she was actually like standing on top of it, mm -hmm. kind of showing to them that she was more um, powerful and more supreme than that image or that uh, God that they believed was real or that they be they believed in at the time. Yeah. So which was pretty interesting because that's another way to relate to them. Like, yeah, dude, like I'm more powerful, like yeah. God is more powerful. So, you know, you know, and it's interesting because like. Like, it's just making me think as, you know, that an image can also communicate something to you. Like, you don't necessarily, like, you know, if, if people are not too familiar with literacy, like, you have this image that can tell you everything. A thousand words. Yeah, all in one. Isn't there an image that you says know? a thousand words, something like that? Yeah, There's... like, a picture's worth a thousand words. You yeah, know, that sounds yeah. really cliche, but, I mean, think about it. It's true. So, yeah, and then there was other things, um, like... Uh, they did testing on the shroud or I'm, I'm the shroud on the, on the Tilma and, um, they just can't figure out where the actual, like what kind of paint it was or mm -hmm. how it was transferred onto the Tilma. Yeah. They can't figure out the colors, where they got these colors yeah, from. Yeah, because they're vibrant. Yeah. And know, so, and, um, and that was even her eyes, they did, they did a study with just to try to look in the image of her eyes and they can actually see an image of um, other people, which is what was crazy was that the guy, the guy that actually did this study, he found images of 
um, like Juan Diego in her eyes and the bishop. And it was almost as if there was a picture taken yeah, it was of the like people. Yeah, was like when she when when it like, appeared on yeah the, like you were basically seeing what she saw at that moment like through the eyes i don't know yeah man. it's pretty it's but pretty, yeah it, it's been scanned like they, scanned. yeah with infrared it's been scanned and yeah. also um they did find that they, that it also has a melody i didn't so. know about the melody like <laughs> yeah. that's super cool but i just did want to add that um i forgot already i forgot <laughs> um so yeah and that was in the 1980s when they did the infrared um and so they could, they haven't been able to determine why oh, it also yeah, yeah, has, yeah. Pre has preserved, ha yeah, why it has been preserved for so long. That's what I was going to say, that, so, that it has really lasted way beyond its time. Yeah. And that's just cool, you know? And it just, like, just to add, it makes me think about, like, how you have these incorruptible saints as well. Yeah, which we should talk about, You too. know? And, like, I feel like it's, like, miracles. Yeah. So Juan Diego was canonized in 2002. And um, so there's also a day, I think there's a day, I think December 9th is when they um, commemorate him. So, um, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that like, is Like, cool. I think, you know, she showed, she appeared to him for a reason. And I feel like he deserves to be, you know, given that credit. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so that's, uh, I think that's all I have um super interesting story. so and i just wanted to kind of put out there you know as as catholics ourselves um we venerate our the blessed mother you know because she is the mother that god chose for her son yes. um so she holds a big key into everything and so jesus also set the example that she was our mother as well yeah so that's why we um appreciate her and we celebrate her and we also pray to her um, we ask her, we ask her for inter to intercede for us. Yeah. So it's just like, I would ask any, any friend or family to pray for me. I ask for our blessed mother to pray for me as well. So yeah. it's and just I a mis like, misconception. Yeah. That but people... the things that, that need to be considered when you do things like that is that like, think about it. Like if you're before a judge, you know, that's what my friend told me and it made complete sense. Like if you're, if you're like. Before a judge, right? And you're being judged and you have a lawyer who can talk on your behalf mm -hmm. to the judge. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So it's it's kind of the same. I, this is like people who are close to Jesus, who are close to God, and they're and you're asking them for their help. Like kind of like to, get my back, you know? Yeah, you know, like can you please <laughs> like talk to him for me? You know, you're yeah. close to him. Which, you know, of course, there's always a, a straight... Um, our straight communication with yeah, God. Yeah, you can always do that. You know, that there's as well. always there's always you can always talk to him straight. You don't need anybody, which is true, but I I also feel like it's helpful for people to actually yeah. put in a word for you, a good word for you, okay? Yeah. There's also uh it's also good for you to ask people to pray for you on on hard times or um when you need the prayer, when you're going through ter turmoil in your life. So I think that the same way that we ask people to pray for us, we ask the saints and we ask our blessed mother to pray for us and to help us. Um, so I feel like then, I just wanted to put that out there because there's a lot of misconceptions that we adore the the images or that we yeah. pray um, to to saints or to the Virgin Mary as if they were God, which is not, it's not true. That's not true. So it's just, they're just interceding for us and we appreciate them. And they, you know, the martyrs deserve yeah. to be, they deserve to be, um, you know, like mentioned and, and, and celebrated because it's, it's a tough situation, um, to die for your faith, you know? And so, yeah, I just wanted to put that out yeah. there. Um, but thank you guys so much. I hope you guys enjoy this video. And that you learned something that you probably yeah, didn't I, know. Yeah, I learned a lot. Yeah, okay? I learned a lot. I didn't know about the melody. Like, that's yeah. interesting. So, um, we'll post a picture so you guys can see of the actual image and, I hope to see you guys on the next episode. All right. Or the next conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye.